everybody. I am Steve Powell. I am the president and CEO of President's Council. We are a uh, we're an industry organization um, with dedicated to bring buyers and sellers together in the global uh, home improvement DIY market. We do that uh, mostly through our decades of in industry experience and senior level retail relationships with most of the major um, big box. And, and leading chain retailers from around the world. If basically, if if a, if a if a retailer is able to take a full container shipment, we pretty much know them very well and uh, and work with them to help them find new suppliers. My guest today, I, I will be doing these uh, a series of these leading up to the National Hardware Show in, in uh, 2024. Um, this is the first in the series. My guest is Mark Owen, who I have worked with many times in the past over the past oh what Mark ten. 12 years, something like that. I'd say 10, 10 or 12 years. Yes. We, we've worked in the, in the U at Marcus from Canada. We've worked in the, in, in North America together, as well as in the European markets. Uh, Mark has extensive uh, international experience beyond that into, into uh, Australia and South Africa. But um, Mark, if you want to tell us a little bit about your company, international office, as we get started here. Sure. Uh, thanks, Steve. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm Mark Owen, and my company is International Office. Uh, it's a consulting company that has been uh, in um, existed since 1999 uh, when I when I came into the industry. Uh, moved back from Australia, um, I had a business there in a, in a different industry, but I brought an Australian brand back to North America and, and developed that brand here. And that that led to um, opening this this company and um, and working with uh, US and UK manufacturers uh, to help them locate um, buyers and distribution partners and JVs uh, in countries outside where their own expertise. So uh, yeah, got a little bit of experience uh, down the road with international, worked in Australia, uh, South Africa, Canada, the US, uh, Germany, Europe, Middle East, uh, you know, I've placed products with companies in over 70 different countries. So uh, we've done a little bit of travel in that time. Mark is a valuable resource to the industry. Uh, always, always enjoyed working with you. Um, and, and the first topic we wanted to cover a little bit was uh, kind of what we see as market indicators and where we see the market going forward. And you know, I always think about it in in terms of you know the the market. What tends to drive DIY, at least, and I don't know if you agree or not, but it, what tends to drive DIY from what we've always seen is people moving. Um, whether you're fixing up your place to sell it or you're moving into a new place and customizing it for yourself, doing the, the improvements and stuff you see. So we kind of really watch the uh, the house housing sales, housing starts, those kinds of things. And it was, it was booming there for a while. Um, it seems to be slowing down here in the U S at least there's, there's some state to state movement. Uh, but uh, I know the housing starts have slowed a bit. What do you see in as far as market indicators and what do you see moving forward the next, you know, three to five years? I definitely agree with you on, on, on your observations in the U.S. Uh, Canada would, would we would follow suit uh, very closely. Um, Australia ha was hit a little bit later, so they they had a little bit of a lag, uh, but they're experiencing that slowdown now as well. Um, the countries uh, like the U.K. and 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 Europe obviously hit with the, the war in the Ukraine uh, and some geopolitical yeah. issues uh, as as our South Africa and so on. So. Um, yeah, and the U.S. currency has remained strong, which which has affected uh, international business as well. So, uh, I'm definitely seeing some of the things that that you're seeing, and and uh, we we had uh, we had some pretty amazing times in DIY when COVID first hit. Everybody stayed home and and uh, did renovations, and uh, we all thought that was going to last forever. Which was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we had a. We had a weird bubble there, you know, and 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 at least uh, you know on this, and, and most of the people that are listening to this are looking to start business in North America, so we should probably kind of sure focus sure. on that. And I think I think U.S. and Canada both they were the uh, the DIY stores were kind of uh, they were deemed essential, so they kind of were able to stay open a lot more, and people were cocooning in their homes. And it was a boom for the for the DIY industry, at, at least if you were already in stores and already selling products, it was hard to get in. But if you were already in, um, people were just selling out. It was it got crazy there for a while, and I think we're kind of recovering from that and getting. There was, you know, you, you got to kind of settle into a normal. Um, but that's what I'm seeing at least. What about are you? It's absolutely the same. But you know, so interesting you say that because there was such a boom, um, and people bought everything that was on the shelf, and and what it did was it was kind of a of a free economics um, effect from that uh, where the, the shelves were empty and. Um, Stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, Seminars, et cetera, in the U.S., 
had some real difficulty getting stock and this this kind of exposed a real gap in in what they had been doing or their focus in buying over the previous years where there, where there was much of a, of a of a focus on reducing um their supplier base to, to have you know vendors that had multiple SKUs and large lines and, and bring those in and those those vendors I won't say they let them down but they, they just ran out of stock like everybody else and it really yeah. exposed some cracks in the industry from the logistic point of view so I see some changes happening because of that it was impossible to forecast for the for the suppliers there was there was no telling and then in, in the middle of that the container crisis went nuts so it, yeah it was thousand dollars for a container uh you know versus five thousand uh in, in, a, yeah. in a couple of weeks so what yeah. we seem to be I through think, that i think we're i think we're, we're we've kind of at least most of the way through that things have normalized a bit don't you think i absolutely do people are sitting on a little bit more stock but that's starting to change now and i and i think as we get through this summer and the third quarter I, I, that's it's really starting to come back into a, a normal cycle i believe so yeah. um what i have seen though is is in the psyche of, of the, the major retailer buyers is that they're they're much more willing now to talk to companies that have uh lower skew counts uh, instead of an entire range so so whereas before uh you know they now we'll just deal with dewalt because they've got you know you know a thousand skews and we don't we don't want these single skew vendors now there's a little bit more interest on their part to to deal with with smaller more niche companies that can that can back up that that line so that they've got so if something does happen from a logistics or a, or a supply point of view they've got a little bit of a backup so definitely seeing some more openness on the point of the buyers to to look at companies that maybe in the past they might not have it's funny it's the same it's the same advice we give to to suppliers when they're looking to come in here you look at that we've got some really you know massive retailers in in, in big box with Lowe's and home mm -hmm. even kind of menards um but taking them on as your first customer can be putting too many eggs in one basket and we're and and i think the retailers have put too many eggs in some supplier baskets where they realized we need to diversify this and 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 and, and mitigate our risk a bit where this is uh they, they saw what can happen um and 100%. that can happen on the supply side too so it's it's a good thing you know it, it keep it, it's a consolidated market the u.s and, and canada somewhat as, as well in some of them it's the same retailers as the u.s but um that consolidation does uh it have some inherent risks in it if you if you're depending on one retailer too much and then they understand that and they they know that they're lowering your cost and they're going to start squeezing you on price um there's well it's in their best interest in a lot of cases you know depot will say well are you can we have an exclusive versus versus lows or canadian tire or so on so it's in their best interest to try and do that but uh, this is where the strategy comes in and if you when you're entering this market uh it, it's good to have some idea of the landscape and the six or seven major retailers that are here yep. uh and and the strategy that you need to to, to do to roll that out and, and if, if there is a particular you may not want to go to the, the biggest one first you may want to go to the smaller one get your feet wet uh, understand the market and so on and not and be able to manage price a little bit better um where if you go to the big one you're and, and you want an exclusive they're really dictating price to you and your margin and all the rest so it can put you in kind of a, a back foot position and i think that's a good segue into the into the conversation on a little bit of the channel management because it is different here in north america than it is in Europe, in in South America, and other places, because the uh, our industry organically grew out of out of uh, the small hardware stores and the lumber yards um, mm -hmm. of of the olden days, and that the the lumber yards kind of changed into home centers, which eventually changed into big box, and the hardware stores all kind of worked together to, to form the co ops. Um, if you want to talk a little bit about the the different channels in the, in the industry, and I, and I, I mean, I, I know I've worked more on the pro side. I can I can explain that a little bit better but i know you're you've got great experience with the with the uh on the on the retail side of it so um just a little bit on the go ahead for, for hard lines i mean generally for hard lines i see four four sort of independent channels there's a few other ones but four major channels and you've got you've got big box you've got uh pro dealers um and co-op you've got uh, specialty dealers and then you've got online and and they are really they require different strategies all of them uh, you know, online, if you if you decide you're just going to come in and go with Amazon uh, or third party vendors, it can be a real dog's breakfast of, of of what to do. And it can ruin your brand. If if you enter the, the wrong channel with the wrong strategy, it can really ruin your brand or set you back many years. So uh, my suggestion is to is to look at what you've got, look at where you're successful at home, because you want to repeat that um, and make a decision and, and form a strategy. That makes sense as to how to launch the brand and and what channels to go in and where your pricing structure should be uh, as well 
So that definitely those those channels, it's it's incredibly important to understand those channels and, and how to manage them. Yeah, and and so that it is there is a big division. Uh, it, it's it's more divided than in a lot of markets um, between where the contractor shop and where the consumer shop, and 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 it's about half and half. If you're looking at at the at the entire uh, North American market, retail and and the installed sales is is about half the market. And really, to get into the the shops, if uh, with consumer packaged goods, if you're getting into the shops that do the hard lines, where um, the the pros are shopping, it's it's typically a, a uh, you know a lumber dealer is going to have the outside area that's all commodity. Um, those those buyers are buying; they don't need to see the product. They're just it, it's just basically almost an auction. Right. Um, and then their indoor hard lines area, where they're, all their packaged goods, the tools, and that kind of stuff are sold, are typically done through a couple of different distributors. Um, Oracle's a big one. Do It Best is a big one. Um, yeah. I think uh, th- th- there's there's some uh, is it Castle up in uh, there, there's there, there's a yes. few in Canada as well. Yeah. Um, it's uh, and then there are your your job site deliveries like your your Mac tools and and, and those kinds of, of folks. Those but, are the specialty guys, and 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 we're I'm seeing some emergence of those here, certainly there, and you know companies like Ace Tool, some that have really done well online, uh, and so on. So and and they seem to be very competitive with price uh you know and 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 try to make the buying process very easy for the contractor and right. i think contractors are going to go where there's the path of least resistance because they don't have the time uh so they're 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 deciding who's got an who's going to give me an account <laughs> first I think- off so you just buy and leave and so on so these are depot and specialty and, and distributors for sure and i think that the, the the real key the real takeaway point here for suppliers coming into this market that are wanting to sell into these multiple channels is the uh, they're structured differently and the margins are different. Um, and you, you don't want to be, you want to put yourself in a pri- in a place where uh, you've got the same product on different shelves at a different pricing. So you really have to kind of manage, like take, take a, uh, with a, if you're selling to the independent hardware stores versus a big box, the margin requirements are going to be a lot different. They're going to be about, you know, 10 to 20 points difference between how many times it has to get touched on the independent side and the, and the hardware side. So there are, there are ways to go about that. I think that um, considering private label, um, you know, g- getting the taking the brand out of the issue a bit can help you with that. Um, and you know, offering maybe different products at, at you know maybe Home Depot and Ace Hardware might get a different product from you. Um, it, there's you just have to differentiate yourself and make sure that you're not um, trying to sell another retailer at the expense of a current account, kind of thing. You know that that. Uh... The price guarantee that so many of these guys have um, uh, leads manufacturers sometimes to do different executions of similar products. I think yeah. that's what you're saying. So, so that there's so that you're not comparing SKU for SKU with the price online uh, or or a price in store. So, de- definitely um, understanding that strategy for sure and understanding where you want to go. The 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 co- there's I mean there's a couple of ways to price things. You've got cost plus where you take your product and you decide I need X margin. And that that's the price you're just gonna that's it or yeah. there's the msrp uh manufacturers suggest retail price and the, and the discount structure and, and my preference is always if you're going to be in multi-channels is you if you have a hundred dollar msrp then each of those channels might have a different discount structure um that that works for them and doesn't allow the price to be completely um destroyed in the marketplace by different uh distribution channels so understanding that price strategy is pretty important as well yeah uh, and it's just something to be aware of. It, it, it there are, it, it, it's a huge market. There are a lot of opportunities. Um, it is consolidated at the top end, but not so much at the bottom end. And and there's a, you know, it's not just you know sell Lowe's, Home Depot, or Menards or the co-ops, and and those, those are your opportunities. There are there are what, I think ten thousand independent hardware stores here in the U.S. I, I have a customer who I think has thirteen thousand accounts in, uh, in in North America. Wow. Yeah, so. It's- uh, I, this is this is the thing. You, you, what you realize is that any one of these channels, if you're successful in, it, it's that that can increase your business uh, in in a in a massive and meaningful way. So to take a shotgun approach and say I just want to come into this market and and sell to the U.S. I think is the wrong approach. If you if you take that that rifle approach and and you decide what you want to do and understand the market, then you can really be successful in that in the niche you pick and then you can start to move to those other channels uh as you're successful and and uh it, the market's enormous really and I, I i think i i i think that's a great point and i and i think that 
our audience here is coming to the national hardware show. And I think that's an, you know, as we will kind of segue into the buying process here, but I think that uh, exhibiting the national hardware show is a great first opportunity to find out where the kind of where your opportunities may lie in this market, where that, where you should start. Um, it, it, you may find out, you know, from the people that are visiting your booth that, you know, that, that this, this seems to be really resonating with contractors or the, the independent hardware stores seem to get it, or this is big box, but it'll help you, you know, find out from who's coming in your booth, kind of narrow that big funnel down to where do I start? And, and that's the first meeting. Uh, and, 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 and really kind of, uh, we, I want to, I want to get into here a, a little bit about how that, what to expect out of that buying process as you're, as, you, as, as the buyers come in, there's interest in in your booth, you know, the next, you want to talk a little bit about the next steps and in, in what, uh, what the buyer's going to expect from these guys. Sure. I mean, it's there's nothing better than than a you know, Home Depot buyer coming in your booth and saying, "I re I really like that. Let's give me a call and 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 we'll we'll run with it." Well, give me a call and we'll run with it. It's usually a you know a year to eighteen month gestation period where you've got to jump through a million hoops. Uh, it's not just that they don't more just buy involved it. more. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. And the buyer may so, change. I mean, it, uh, yeah. So, Buyer will change. It's not a may change. The buyer will change. Yeah. Uh, you get you get two thirds of the way there with a buyer, and then the next one comes in and and um, doesn't doesn't pick it up. So there's there's all kinds of things um, that can change, and uh, and I think that's where uh, you know certainly you, Steve, with President's Council. I mean, you can certainly help in that regard. You've you've, you've got yeah. It's not insurmountable. It's, it's a it's a it's it's a task. It's it, it's a it's a big project to 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 get into this market, but it is. You know, and you're going to make mistakes, um, but you know, getting some guidance and stuff is really. I mean, and and your first step in, in even listening to this interview, you're 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 uh, you're starting to educate yourself on on the market. But um, so, buyer's coming in. He's saying, you know, I, I like what you got. Let's uh, here's my card or here's scan my badge, and and now you're in follow up mode. And and often what happens is is the first thing you'll do when you get back home uh, with your product is send is send a picture of your product and a price to the buyer. I mean, it's just it's just. The wrong thing to do right out of the gate um a, a, a kind of a rookie mistake uh you did you definitely want to be asking you know in the in the instance of home people okay what what does your program look like what what are the what are they the the back end points uh you know is there marketing co-op dollars is there is there a new store opening is there is there a, is, there's so many related costs in doing business with these guys um that understanding their program first and what and where and how they want to sell it in the store is it is it uh, on shelf is it uh promotion uh, pro promotional pulse twice a year is it is it just online because often oftentimes they'll start with just online to see how the product does and does that mean that you have to stop become the new test market i mean it, it's right. uh, there are some products i think that really that really kind of lend themselves to like special order type of things that are yep. that are naturally online but they a lot of retailers here are using the online as a test market and if you hit numbers that they'll have benchmarks to hit and if you hit those numbers then you're on shelf but it's a it's a chance to prove yourself and, and even in between that, they'll they'll you know if you do well online, they'll they'll say, well, can we do a quarter pallet a seasonal pulse uh, or or a pulse that makes sense wherever your product fits in? It could be that that aisle violator, or, you know, a quarter pallet stand that's in the aisle. You see them in the stores often. So, and all of these things um, have different requirements, and sometimes they're different buyers even within within uh, the umbrella of that buying team. So, uh, I, I think it's important that when you when you first submit. It's more about asking questions to understand what uh, what their program looks like and how you can fit into that program. And I think if you if you pitch it, it's not the right word, but if you explain it in that regard, say, look, we want to do the best job we can for you. Uh, we so we want to understand your program well so that we can we can dovetail with that and and make sure that uh, um, uh, we're both successful because they will not keep your product if it if it doesn't if it's not successful and if it doesn't achieve the growth numbers that they have uh required within their program and if it doesn't grow every year uh you know how are you adding to that to, within the next year within that range of products that make sense to continue to grow that so these are all the things that the buyer will have an interest in more than just saying that's a cool product i just want to take it so, yeah yeah does that answer the question i think so yeah i mean I, I, so it, as there's in pre in preparation for the national hardware show the, the, the suppliers are going to want to come with some pricing information and 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 then 100 what would you, if they're going to have one, you know, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, freight collect, uh, what, the, the, the moat, what would you say is the, 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 the template that they would use as, you know, kind of a, a basis 
of, you know, some, some of these guys are going to want um, most, I think most of, most of this business is going to be talking about uh, full container business. If we're talking about overseas, most of these guys yeah. full container, what would you suggest the suppliers have prepared as far as a, a quote to be able to give to, and then, and then also what do they need to be holding back for, <laughs> for, for uh, right. you know, rebates and those kinds of things that are inevitably those shoes are going to drop. I think it would be important for you for them to have a uh, a suggested retail price. I mean, that's where you want to start. Where 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 will the product sell in the marketplace? Uh, what's the sweet spot? What's that range of retail price? And even to say to a buyer, look, the retail range will be between eighty nine and ninety nine dollars, or, or hey, something uh, like that. If, before we get further into this, there, there is one point that I always tell with uh, international suppliers is that. Our sales tax or VAT is not included in the shelf price. Correct. That's an important point. Correct. A lot of places they are. So when you're looking at the shelf prices, you kind of have to know that um, that to back out that you know that the VAT is not included there. It's, and it's and it's uh, you know typically here in the U.S. it's somewhere you know eight to twelve ish. Canada's what uh, is worth thirteen here, but uh, but I, you know so I think I think even seven seven to twelve or something like that in the state spending. I think uh, yeah, depending on where you I mean it's, it's different state to state, county to county here. Um, Correct. So Correct. it's. It, it is it, there. That is one of the big differences in, especially. It, I encourage everyone to get into stores. Um, if you're interested in a retailer, go, go and yes. you'll be able to know what they're doing. You'll, you'll see kind of what their their well their their assortment, their their strategy, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but as you're looking at the prices, you may be salivating, thinking, "Oh, we can sell." <laughs> but um, yeah, it's 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 uh, there. There is every, every, retail, every retail price. price. Including Amazon prices, everything you see online does not have tax in, yep. in the. It's additional, and the consumers here are used to paying it. So when they're pulsing a ninety nine ninety nine price, that's probably ends up being one hundred and seven or one hundred and eight by the time it goes through the register. Right. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. A little hidden cost for. In, for sorry, I, I just want to throw that in there. As we're, as we're totally doing. fine. So um, I would suggest that that uh, you come prepared with a some kind of a retail range that's going to make some sense, and don't don't. Be afraid to ask if you've got a good product that's a proprietary product and it and and it's and it's good and you've got and you're sourcing well and, and you're good at what you do. Don't be afraid to ask, you know, the the, the proper buying uh, price for your product. So having having that price would be good. Um, understanding that this is very general terms here. So so from that retail price, uh, Depot who, Depot and Lowe's, the big boxes, uh, and some of the others are you're probably going to need to build in you know, 40 points on that at a minimum um, because they're going to want 25 or 30 at the store level and there's going to be 10 or 15 in back-end points. So, yeah. so and it's different product to product. I mean, it, it's uh, correct. especially within a hardware store, you're looking at anywhere from commodity to special order. The, the, I mean, you're, you're, you're talking kind of the sweet spot of where the, and I think that's good information. Very general. Of it is. But, but I mean, again, if you're if you're coming to to the to the hardware show uh, with your booth and you're selling screws and fasteners that are that are fairly much a commodity, you realize that the margins are going to be much lower on that versus a, a highly proprietary product that has patent pennings or patents and so on. You're, you're going to ask a little bit more for that. So uh, I say very general terms, um, but look, they're in it to make money. So uh, and and they push very hard. Some of these guys. So. Um, I'd say you have, need to have your retail price set and, and, um, yeah, you need to leave some, the, there, there, there are, you know, loyalty programs, uh, there's billing fees, defective. Yes. If, if you're one of the, one of the key things really is, um, for, if you've already been dealing with the big box retailer, you kind of know this stuff. And I think that's really good information when you're meeting with a buyer, it, it may not be, if you've got experience selling, say Bunnings. That's not yeah. U.S. experience, but it's big box experience, and it, and it's it's relevant in that way. I mean, if you if you've been selling to U.S. hardware stores and you're looking to get into big box, there's some relevance there. But if there's also relevance just dealing with big box, absolutely, or, it, like, or any channel. Yeah, the modus operandi of any of these of any of these a couple of these top channels or the big the big ones going to be very similar all over the world. I mean, if you're if you're from Europe and uh, the U.K. and you're dealing with with B and Q, Screwfix. Uh, uh, Castro, I any of these big guys, you know the program. It'd be very similar in a lot of ways. So might it, they paint it maybe with a little bit different, uh, you know, might be called something different, but it's ultimately the same margin pool that they want to they want to bring the money back into. So de definitely, um, uh, that experience within your home country will will play out here to some degree. So they've had their meeting. They they met them at the hardware show. They're following up. They're sending price quotations. They are communicating back and forth with the buyer on, you know, we need this, we need this quantity, we need, you know, what, and, uh, and now they get their, their, as they're, you know, most of the big 
retailers, whether it's whether it's the co-ops, the the, the distributors, or they're they're going to put you into a line review process. They've got these scheduled out for for a year, um, and you're now you're invited to the line review. Uh, what Correct. would you suggest they be preparing in in in, uh, in 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 anticipation of this? So I think what's really important to understand um, is is obviously what they're asking for. If, if the line review is uh, for a screwdriver, let's say, for example, um, I think it would be very important that you understand uh, what that what that set looks like within the within the store. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to understand the landscape within the store and the geography uh, and the square footage uh, what's there because if if you want to speak the buyer's language he's got to make that square footage sing in terms of margin for him so uh, it, it would be important for you to understand what that looks like uh how your product can fit in to uh, you know i've i've helped people even taking by taking pictures of the, of the set in the store and then superimposing their product in where where the where they might uh where we want to be <laughs> over the product where that they that they're looking to, to fill or the gap that they're looking to fill so these are things it's it's important to understand what what the buyer's goal is so i think uh more than just pitching you know present saying wow there's an opportunity i'm going to pitch my product i think it's really important to understand where it's going what it's going to do what it's going to produce from a from a dollar or a margin point of view from a square footage so having some of that information and, and understanding the volume uh and those um those forecast expectations i think is is something that you would want to be pretty clear on with the buyer as well because that's going to play a huge part over just price uh, as to what's going to make a successful product for them. because it, it Yeah, I mean, the, the buyers are typically evaluated on some sort of a GMROI calculation uh, for their, whether it's their bonuses or what. And and it's not just the margin. Uh, it's, you know, it's margin, it's turns. You know, there are several ways you can affect that and make your buyer look like a hero, um, whether it's, you know, if you're, if you're able to really provide just-in-time inventory and those kinds of things, there are, uh, you know, it's, and, and, and really, Putting it, you want you want to minimize the risk for the buyer, and there are you know really kind of finding ways to not just dump the product on the buyer and say, hey, sell this, help them sell it is uh, is make the buyer a hero. Is they, it, it's very it's a very common mistake to think that once you get your product into Home Depot, that they're going to sell it. Uh, that is that is true to some degree, but but you he'll be asking you, what are you doing to sell the product for us? Okay. So, so if you don't have a mark, if you don't have marketing, uh, you know, some, some kind of, um, SEO going and, and some kind of, um, promotional, um, preparedness plan or marketing plan that's going to support that product within their stores. That's a, that's a, you know, the buyer will see that as a negative. So you, you've got to come with the full package, not just the price and the product. You've got to understand what, what the, what the forecast and the turns are going to be. You've got to understand how we're going to try and pull that product through the stores as well. Uh, not to mention, it is is from an ex, from an expert readiness point of view, is it, have we hit all the language things? Do we do Prop sixty five uh, certifications for uh, and get all that information for California? There's a, there's a few other things as well to make sure that your product is there and ready to go as well on the shelf. That makes sense. So it's got Spanish, uh, possibly uh, Spanish and English on it because uh, there's a, a Spanish and French in Canada. There's a legal requirement uh, yep. to have French in Canada. So so you can't sell a product uh, through Home Depot unless there's French uh, on the packaging. So some of those little... Even in the areas where nobody speaks French. <laughs> it, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 10 minutes away from Quebec, which is, yeah. you know, uh, little France. So um, there's some there's some little things that can really knock your, your, your timeline out uh, if, if you're not prepared uh, in the beginning to, to answer these questions uh, to these buyers. Yeah, what I, I mean, I, what I normally tell people is you want to come with your pricing, uh, your marketing, competitive analysis, uh, you Correct. know, what your advantages are to what's, you want to, you want to show them that you know what's in the market, that you've done your homework and what you can Forecast. do. Forecast. Yep. Forecasts, um, which is, you know, market information, what you're suggesting the product mix is and, and really that's that's it, that in a way that you can differentiate there between the different channels. You're suggesting yep. one thing to the big box and maybe something different to the to the pro dealer or the, the independent hardware stores. Um, what, what your service plan is going to be, you know, are, there are some big box retailers that are kind of notorious for not rolling things out the way that, that we were, they were agreed to be rolled out. And you yeah, have yeah. to be prepared to, to uh, you know, and the buyers know it, be prepared to to. Uh, it have to be, but it's 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 an advantage to be prepared to 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 help overcome that. 
Um, so you've got all that stuff, and and I think that what you, to really expect on the in the in the in the uh, in the line review itself is you're going to make a presentation. It'll be on one day. You're going to make a presentation, then you're going to go and wait, and they'll call you back in if if you've if you've kind of made it to the next round for final negotiations, and yeah. and it should be almost uh, buttoned down. You know, there's going to be obviously there's going to be a little bit of after negotiations, but it should be buttoned down within a day or two of that of that line review. Um, it's a it's an intense process. I agree. Uh, there's there's times too if, you, if you've got your vendor number and you're already supplying products and you have a, a decent relationship with the buyer too. Oftentimes the buyer, if if you've got a good relationship, will say, "Look, I I'm I'm struggling with this particular vendor. I can't I can't. There's supply issues, or we don't like the product, or it's not selling well. Can you help us? Yeah. Uh, with this? So so oftentimes they'll if you're a valued and good supplier, they'll 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 carve a path for you to actually get something in there. So th- there's real benefits to to getting one or two SKUs in there and, and getting that relationship going and then, and then trying to grow from there. Absolutely. Um, I think that the, the, the only other thing that I really wanted to touch on, unless you've got some, um, some other issue or some other topics you wanted to talk about was one of the things that is in this market that people may not from other markets may not um, geographic markets may not be familiar with is with our, the amount of, stores that are served through two-step distribution, whether that's Ace Hardware or Do It Best or True mm-hmm. Value or, or Orgle, these co-op distributor, what, however they, they are structured, um, they have dealer shows. Um, yes. Uh, usually about two a year, one in spring, one in fall. And and where a big box is probably going to, if they're interested, they may do it, put it online or some sort of a test market. What the co-ops and the distributors would normally do is invite you into the show so that they can, these are buying shows. There are, there are store owners um, typically independent store owners that are walking around actually placing orders. Um, but it is an added cost um, and it is a profit center for these guys, but it is also, uh, and you've been through a ton of these, Mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's different than the hardware show, it, but and it, it, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for the suppliers, but it is, I, sometimes you have to choke on the cost a little bit, but you want, you want to explain the d- dealer shows to the, the folks that may not be familiar? Sure. I mean, there's there's two types of shows. Obviously, the National Hardware Show, Cologne, and the big buying shows, and and they're they're a pull show. They expect to pull in, uh, you know, uh, people from outside who you know want to see your brand in your booth. Whereas the the co-op shows, you know, do it best, uh, Ace, and so on in, in North America. Their push. I mean, it's they they you're in that booth. You've got your product. You've got your price list. The people that are visiting your booth are qualified buyers from from the thousand or two thousand independent stores that they have, and they're all coming to this show to see what's new, to see what uh, what's being supported by by the you know the, the the mothership, and to to understand the product and how it works. And you may have in your booth, you would have a planogram. You would have a a, a special price if they bought in that planogram. Uh, or that program uh, for that show. So, I mean, whereas, uh, you know, kind of at, at the hardware show and, and Cologne and the bigger sh- uh, Shanghai, you're wait, you're kind of eagerly waiting at the edge of your booth for somebody to come by. It's not like that at these shows. Y- yes, you pay, you pay a little bit more, but everybody who walks in your booth can sign a PO and, and can actually will want the product shipped into their stores. So I'm not saying everybody who comes into the booth does that, but but you have a, a much different opportunity Um you know, every everyone there is buying, so that's the difference. There, but they are expensive, yes. And and there are and there and and it kind of segues into the there are different ways to get into these. You know, it's not just they they and then each. So you can sell directly to the 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 warehouse, and then they ship it out to the 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 uh, the stores themselves, and and yeah. they can they can do national advertising or really kind of push it out to the stores. They can that they can decide. Well, well, we like it, but we don't really. Want, it's not enough for all of our stores, so we're going to do. We need to do a direct ship program. And that way you're you're maybe doing the billing through the central and then shipping directly to the stores. There's right. a there's less hands on it, so there's a little less margin that way, but you're having to 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 take on some extra work and cost in in the logistics. So um, or you know th- there are a few different ways that product can get from a supplier into a into a uh into a, an independent hardware store, and each step has a little bit different costing to it. Um and it really depends on what they think the opportunity is. Well, and and I guess this is where it's a little bit different. You're, the buyer, the merchandiser at at Home Depot, for example, decide what the set is going to look like in every every one of their stores. They might have two different sizes of stores, you know, throughout their twenty five hundred stores, uh, thirteen hundred one and whatever. Whereas 
the, the co-ops, these, this is, these, some of them are mom and pop hardware shops that are, that are, you know, a thousand square meters. And some of them are, 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 are big, big box size stores that, that, that are, that are huge, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 square meters. So, um, so they, every buyer is a little bit different. Some might only be able to take a, a small portion of, of, of your range where the other might say, send me the whole, send me the whole range. I want to, I want to put that out there. So it's definitely um, not as, streamlined in in terms of you know one one fits all one one planogram fits all uh so you've got to be prepared a little bit with your with your offering to to to, to be flexible and to, and to work yeah, with these the, the store owner has a lot more autonomy than a store manager correct yeah <laughs> it's, yes that's their business so yeah, yeah um i i i don't really have any i mean i think we've covered quite a bit um if uh Mark is, by the way, um, I will be at the National Hardware Show. Mark and I are both going to be there to answer all your questions. If you want to come in and say hi to us, and uh, you know, we're we're uh, we're both here to to help if we can. Um, if you've got any questions in the meantime, my email is spowell at presidentscouncil.com. Um, uh, you can email me, and I can get you to Mark. Mark's email is mark at uh, mark. What's it's a international it's dash mark with a k. Mark with a k. M a r k at international dash or a hyphen office dot com so mark at international dash office dot com if you got any questions uh otherwise um our next uh my, my next interview is going to be with uh with jim inglis who is the former um executive vp of home depot during their early growth years um he literally wrote the book on diy retailing so uh you know mark and i can talk from the sales side and then we're going to get a little buy side uh buy side information um, coming up on the next one. So I appreciate everyone for, uh, for listening and uh, listening to me and Mark's just here and talk. Um, uh, Mark, anything to add before we finish up? Well, good, good luck with, with, uh, with Jim English. That's a, that's a coup to get that interview. That's a, that's a real big he's, one. So you know, he's a, one he was so. the, he's the former um, chairman of our advisory board for president's council. So he's someone that I've done for, for many, many years. And I mean, he's an absolute treasure trove of wealth of DIY mm -hmm. retailing. Yep. both South America, Europe, uh, and obviously North America. So um, that's going to be fun too. And uh, we look forward to seeing y'all in, uh, in Las Vegas next year. Great. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. All right.